Hi, this is Don Clark with FM Database Consulting and with uh, FileMakerProGurus.com. Uh, today I'm really happy to be able to interview and, and talk with uh, Honza Kodelka. And I hope I said that correctly. If not, that's on me. Uh, from 24U Software. And, and tell us, okay, first off, where are you right now? Uh, I'm in Prague. In Prague, okay. In, in my home office. In your home office, wonderful. So you, you're based out of Europe, obviously, um, and and you have quite a few uh, things going on over there. And you have a, a, a look at your website. I've, I've known you for a lot of years, just casually able to talk and stuff like that and say hi. Now we're going to get a chance to know you a little bit better. So I'm I'm excited about this. So tell me, what got you started in FileMaker, when, and when did that happen? <clears throat> okay, the, my, my personal story started back uh, too many years ago. Actually, it's 20, oh, in 1991, actually. Okay. <laughs> so, so in 1991, uh, 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 when I got my first Mac, uh, it was preloaded with FileMaker Pro uh, 1.2, I think. Okay. And uh, so, so that was one of the softwares I got available. And because uh, I studied uh, computer science, so uh, I, I knew programming, uh, so I examined everything. And uh, I liked FileMaker and started using it for myself and to help my mom uh, with her business uh, okay. almost immediate, immediately. So, so that was my early start. Uh, then I tried every every following version. Uh, even though I was still a student, I learned. I, I uh, did some internship uh, work uh, where every time I did something, uh, FileMaker got involved somehow because it was helping me. So so it became my natural tool. Mm -hmm. And uh, when uh, I grew up a little bit, uh, both uh, physically and uh, technically. Uh, uh, it led to uh, me starting with my friend, uh, creating an accounting uh, package in FileMaker Pro mm -hmm. uh, 3 originally, then 4 when, when it was released. Right. And around the same time, we decided to found a company. So we found a company, uh, hence the name, 2 for you because we were two originally. So, oh, okay, so it's not 24, it's <coughs> 2 for you. I did not exactly, know. it's 2 for oh. you. And you can notice it from the logo because because the 4 has different colors. So, right. So that should hint uh, how to pronounce that. Okay, that's good to know. It's something I did not understand. <laughs> and uh, so so that's how we started. We, we, uh, and, uh, we had a, a simple accounting package with uh, created in f at that time FileMaker Pro 4. And because... That was a challenge. Uh, because FileMaker Pro 4 also brought plugins, uh, mm -hmm. API, so we almost immediately started doing uh, creating plugins for FileMaker. But the primary business for us was creating custom solutions for uh, customers here in Czech Republic. Uh, but uh, when we started uh, creating plugins, that brought us to the uh, worldwide market because uh, because uh, then we had something useful for other FileMaker developers around the world. And that's how uh, 2 for You became known in the FileMaker community uh, very soon after that. Yes. So many people may know us uh, for our plugins. But uh, to be honest, it always was only a very small portion of what we do. And uh, taking care of customers who uh, use FileMaker as, as mm -hmm. their uh, primary tool for, for business, right. uh, that's, that's our primary business and always has been. Although uh, as we grew up, uh, I don't know if you know that right now 2 for you is around 60 people. Ah, so it's 2 for 60 uh, Yes, we just uh, when we started growing up, uh, we decided that uh, uh, it's difficult to have our name grow with us. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, you know, uh, but every day for your website, that's yeah, not your thing, so. uh, but uh, but it always played well and well in alphabetical listings, so we keep mm -hmm. so we, we decided to keep it, but anyway, uh, uh. It was it was long history. We founded the company in 2000. Now it's 2018, so uh, we are in business for over 18 years now. Okay. And 
basically uh, by bringing more people and more experience uh, we started more activities and right now two for you is three divisions one is uh, uh, computers uh, which um, is about selling uh, computers uh, peripherals and taking care of uh, hardware okay uh, the youngest division is our outsourcing division where we have people uh, working for our customers in their location mm -hmm. and uh, this is mostly uh, related to software testing professional okay. software testing and our biggest customers for software testing outsourcing are uh, banks so so we uh, our people test bank bank software, bank software and okay. and the and the other uh, division is the software division which i am currently responsible for uh, mm -hmm. it's about third of the company so around 20 people and uh, this software division is about custom software solutions so uh, we also do some minor stuff like uh, electronic books uh, so if you check if you check uh, ibook store on uh, on mm -hmm. an ipad uh, and check the food uh, food category uh, mostly in czech language uh, then uh, we o occupy probably the first 12 uh, uh, titles that th those right. are all made, made by us mm -hmm. uh, so um, that's, that's, not, that's uh, quite a diversity. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, uh, we we decided to do this because because um, we found that uh, ebooks are actually a software. That's not uh, not real book. It's it's a software, and especially right. if you if you want to make it right, if you want to take advantage of the technology and not just convert the paper book into into digital form. So so we really do. Um, uh, leverage the, the technology and make them multi uh, multimedia okay. but uh, the primary uh, focus is uh, custom software and okay. mainly mainly software for businesses so our software division currently has three teams one is focused on filemaker development where all all the team members are uh, filemaker 17 certified at this moment okay uh, then we have a team that does uh, native native code native coding like filemaker plugins uh, apple script editions native apps for for mac windows linux uh, okay. ios android uh, even even custom platforms such as raspberry pi uh, or arduino uh, mm -hmm. and uh, then we have third development team that's for web applications and as you know, uh, uh, all these technologies now play well with FileMaker. So, oh, yeah. so uh, we actually benefit from having these three teams and we uh, can offer uh, any kind of technology combi combination uh, of technologies. And uh, our, one of our strengths is integrating FileMaker with, with other technologies. And because of the... Uh, Code, coding team uh, one of our specialty is in integrating it with uh, hardware we have integrated f over the 18 years we have integrated filemaker with maybe 30 different hardware technologies uh, i don't know ex the exact number but we do it more and more and just this year uh, at defcon we were demo, uh, we were showing a demo uh, when in a single demo we uh, had 11 different hardware technologies all integrated with with um, uh, filemaker app I, I saw that and you handed me a, a ticket that you produced through the whole system after doing it it was very impressive and it was actually set up if, if i remember correctly to work in uh, very low tech areas um, in africa right uh, yes, basically the demo that we set up for the DEFCON this year mm -hmm. uh, was uh, built of technologies that uh, we were using in a real projects uh, for real customers this year. Yeah. We picked we picked three of our projects from from this year uh, and use uh, combined all the technologies we use there uh, for this demo. So first okay. one was uh, was specifically a project for for African company. Uh, Actually, it's a it's a company that's funded by uh, by uh, international uh, investors, 
but mm -hmm. the, the primary focus of this company called Jacoma uh, is uh, to grow and buy uh, uh, chili peppers, paprikas, and macadamia nuts from local from local farmers and export them out of Malawi. Uh, Malawi is the is the one of the poorest countries uh, in Africa. And uh, this company is trying to help them to uh, live better lives and also to bring uh, high quality, uh, f fresh, uh, freshly made uh, uh, products out of Africa. So uh, we all get uh, good out of it. Uh, the, uh, yeah. Malavian, Malavian people get better life and yeah. we, get better, we get better vegetables. And so and they meet all the standards that need to be met for them to be able to export this kind of stuff, right? Yes. You're helping them and, get a leg up and, or something. They'd have a lot of trouble yeah. understanding. And, this, and the system we built for them actually in, incorporates several technologies uh, to help them track everything. So uh, we created an app that runs on iPhone Plus. Uh, they uh, go to the field to visit the farmer. They scan the farmer's ID with the app uh, to identify the farmer. Then they use a digital scale to weight uh, the amount of crops they uh, collect from them. Uh, they uh, issue a receipt using mobile printer uh, for the farmer so that there is a, a proof that uh, the farmer uh, got uh, the amount of money they get. Right. And uh, this all information is all also uh, assigned to a SEC, which is identified with the RFID tag. So when the final customer gets uh, gets the sack full of uh, chili peppers, it still can be tracked down to the specific farmer who produced it, uh, mm -hmm. with the benefit of uh, this company having complete evidence of, of all the transactions. Okay. That, yeah, that was impressive. Uh, the whole the whole technology angle, everything integrating, everything able to you know they're able to do this stuff out in the field uh, with very little, with it, pretty much the, no internet, nothing like that. There's nothing there. They, everything was all collected locally and then brought back and updated. I assume I didn't see that portion of it, but uh, that's really that's really something. I'm glad you guys were. I, I'm glad you showed that because it really impressed me. Not only the technology, but what you're doing to help people. So, mm -hmm. yeah, that's a big part. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, 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 other, the, the other project we used for this demo was a project of a startup from Netherlands who actually built a machine for automate, a mobile machine for automated planting. Mm -hmm. So uh, I don't know, not many people uh, are aware of uh, a big problem that uh, we are, that, that's ahead of us because the population on, on the earth is growing much quicker than the food production. So we really need to find a solution to this problem. Indeed. And this, and this startup from, from Netherlands, uh, actually has a solution that helps, uh, locally grow vegetables or herbs, uh, with, uh, with a machine that controls the light, controls the environment, watering, all the aspects of the of the growing cycle mm -hmm. and because it's fully controlled environment uh, it doesn't depend on on the uh, on the weather right. so you can you can grow uh, your vegetables in the basement you can grow them on mars <laughs> for instance <laughs> uh, and you can still uh, achieve the same results because because you have control over the uh, conditions and uh, you can grow it locally. You, you can you can grow locally, so you don't have to, you don't have to uh, wait uh, weeks for for your vegetables to come uh, to to come on the road from different country. Oh, you don't have yeah. to you don't have to pollute the uh, environment with with all the uh, all the uh, Gas of the, that's consumed by oh the yeah products. all the expense that's involved yeah, with that yeah, yeah. exactly and so, so you don't get as good so, a quality of vegetable when it has to travel a long distance to get to where yeah. you are. and, right. and uh, it's it's quite unique because it's mobile so so it re it really can travel to to the local place and one of the ideas is to uh, to grow the vegetables uh, directly in the restaurants or in 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 the in the stores wow how much how much space would that take. I mean, to grow a decent amount, and how long? 
Well, the current prototype can fit in this room where I'm sitting in. Okay. Wow. But 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 it can it can it can also control a much larger environment like a glass house. It just, it depends on what's yeah. what, what amount of production that uh, you're looking for. Okay. So. So back to back to uh, what we have done. Uh, basically, this this startup has created the hardware, and again, we have created the software to run it. Okay. So so we have created the solution based on FileMaker, and uh, because it's uh, hardware, uh, we uh, took advantage of our uh, ability to integrate hardware with FileMaker. So so okay. there are uh, there are valves, there are pumps, uh, many different environmental sensors. And all that is uh, controlled by FileMaker. Yeah, and you're using some of your so your plugins to do that. Uh, yes. Which ones are you using? Uh, well, this this one is using the Fidgets plugin, uh, and yep. uh, we are using the uh, Fidgets uh, devices. Those are right. uh, there is a quite a variety of devices that you can uh, that you can connect together and and use. But basically, um, uh, our our focus is on well, you get the hardware, you want it integrated with your software, and we right. do it for you. Mm -hmm. So, so that's what we do. Okay. And and uh, I forgot to mention that uh, we also have one more team, and it's our testers team because because of having that other division that does software testing for banks, mm -hmm. we learn we learned a lot about software testing over years, right? Uh, which led us to build a team uh, which is. Uh, consists just of full-time software testers and that helps us uh, achieve quite high uh, level of quality of uh, all the software that we make okay well that's nice that's very it's very important actually you have to the testing and routine is is pretty strict and you have to t try to be able to reenact so many different possibilities and, and look for use cases and the yes. use cases have to be tested after each iteration quite often in many areas. So it's a lot of work. And I don't think people yes, appreciate exactly. that. And even then, you're going to put out software that's going to have need some tweaking as a rule because people will use yeah. it a little differently than you anticipated. So, yeah. yeah that's going well, to many, many, many developers and development companies out there, uh, even without some, some of them without knowing that, some of them without admitting that, uh, mm -hmm. But many of them use the customer as a tester, yes. and uh, in some cases that's very dangerous for the customer. Mm -hmm. so, so what we do is we try to test uh, as much as possible before deploying our uh, software, right. uh, thus minimizing the risk for the customer. Okay. Well, that makes sense. Um, it, it really does because a lot of times you're right. They can mess things up. They can they can take all the data out of a database or a table or something like that. Not not intentionally. You just get left them an opening, and they didn't even know that they were doing it, perhaps, or modifying something they shouldn't be able to modify. So that's real good. But you have some other prod uh, stuff going on as well. I think you told me um, that you're able to turn a an app into an iOS uh, compliant program. Yeah, well, uh, uh, FileMaker uh, some time ago released uh, what they call uh, iOS App SDK. Yeah, uh, it's, mm -hmm. it's available on the FileMaker community for for members uh, for FDS subscribers. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, we started using it uh, immediately when it was released, but uh, the issue we had was uh, for for the FileMaker team who primarily develops FileMaker apps. Right. Uh, the tools that they w would have to use to actually turn the FileMaker app into a native iOS app uh, were too uh, different and too difficult to use for them, like the Xcode from Apple, the, the development environment, yeah. and the process of, of building the app and all that stuff, and then deploying the app to, to the device. All that mm -hmm. stuff was... Uh, natural for our coders team who do native mm -hmm. apps uh, as one, one of their uh, tasks, but uh, for our FileMaker team, it was quite difficult. And I uh, ended up discovering that when we had a project that involved a mobile mobile version of the app, and to be honest, right now it's almost every project because because mobile technologies are used everywhere. So yeah. so everyone uh, can benefit from having having at least some uh, interface of their app 
on on the mobile device. Right. Uh, but why, what I discovered was that uh, they were postponing the final building uh, the app to the very end of the project. And as as you can imagine, uh, some uh, issues and some bugs cannot be discovered until you finally build the native app, try to put it on the device, and test it. Right. Uh, so and, and we, the aspect of it, yes. So so we were finding many many issues uh, very late, uh, very late uh, when we were almost supposed to deliver, mm-hmm. and uh, basically. Uh, if we, we we were trying to uh, uh, limit the number of builds to absolute minimum, like three or four builds was maximum. Mm-hmm. And so I wanted to make this easier for the team. So I asked the other team, the coders team, right. to come up with a solution for that. And uh, when, when the solution was ready, I discovered that now our FileMaker team, when they work on, on an app for, for a customer, uh, they very often do like eight or 10 builds a day. Right. Just because it's so easy, so convenient. It's, it's so easy to build, build uh, the native app uh, and try it out. And I will show you uh, because when I discovered that it makes our lives easy, mm-hmm. uh, I, I, simply couldn't resist to make it a product or service available for everyone. So I think that's a great idea, yeah. So, so if you navigate the, to our website and mm-hmm. uh, scroll down to the services, you will mm-hmm. find here is uh, under developer tools, there is a thing called Xcode. Mm-hmm. And this is the service that we have for building native apps. Okay. And... Uh, even though it's very easy, it's uh, it would take a few minutes. So I will not show show the process now. But there is a video where where I show how easy it is to uh, to do that. Right. Basically, uh, I can show you the interface. So when you have an account that you create here, mm-hmm. you simply log in. Um, obviously, you need uh, uh, <laughs> the right credentials in in, in the in the keychain, so uh, let's try once more. I okay. think this is the problem uh, everybody in the world's having. If you could solve this one, that would be <laughs> something. Because, and, and on top of that, everybody now wants you to do two path factor authentication. They're always wanting to send you a text or an email or something like that. and. Quite often, this happens too often. So, I'll try to type. You use LastPass. I use LastPass software. Or keep just the key. Yeah, just a, okay. Hey. Okay, I, I had an old password stored in the keychain. So, so mm-hmm. here you can see the interface. Is you just have uh, uh, the the builds. When you want to create a new build, mm-hmm. you create a new build here. And you just fill in a few information, name of the app, uh, some basic things that you always uh, have to know. Mm-hmm. Here you drag and drop your FileMaker file. Okay. And here just the app icon, uh, launch image, and obscure icon. And here you can see what, what, what is expected. Right. So basically you create, you create three images, you, you put in the FileMaker file, and hit the build. Wow, and, and what you get as a result in a few minutes is that you have the build here, and when you when you click there on the link, there is a page that is ready to install the app straight to your device. Wow! So on on the iPad or iPhone, you just click install, and that's it. Yeah, you you log onto that page and click install, and you're ready to go. Wow! Yes. So, so the, it's it's as easy as this. Uh, as this. And uh, how do you be using this this uh, this feature, this service that you have? It's so, a really so, impressive service. So, yeah. So, so you can imagine uh, why and how this uh, simplified our building process, and mm-hmm. and why why we uh, not rarely uh, create eight or more builds a day. 
because it's so easy. It right. just re really takes a few minutes. But this this just a very small example. That's, a, that's can, an impressive piece of software. Your coding team's incredible. So uh, yeah. So when you when you um, when you talk about this uh, iOS apps, the other thing is uh, we. As I mentioned, uh, we focus on integrating uh, hardware with FileMaker. Mm -hmm. And the demo that we were showing at DEF CON, that was actually utilizing one other product that we released just recently, and it's this Go Nectar. It's, okay. a, it's, a, it's a plugin that's built specifically for being used with the FileMaker iOS app SDK when you build iOS apps, native apps with FileMaker. Uh, I don't know how many people are aware of the fact that they can use plugins with FileMaker Go, but it's actually uh, required that they use the iOS app SDK to build their own native app to in order to use a plugin. Right, you can't do it on the on the, the, the you, you, you can yeah. yeah, you cannot do it with FileMaker Go as mm -hmm. it comes from the App Store. Right, but you, you can do it with the with the native app that you build with the iOS app SDK. And this specific plugin that lets you connect several different devices uh, that are very commonly used in POS solutions. Right, but I can imagine they use in in other situations like uh, warehouse inventory monitoring. Uh, people monitoring attendance and things right. like that, and those those different things are um, UHF RFID reader. Uh, for those who don't know what it is, uh, UHF RFID uh, is the technology that's used in the stores uh, right. to to protect the goods against stealing. Right. So. So it's uh, it can be just a very small sticker uh, which can be identified by this reader, and uh, so and because because it's uh, a piece of hardware, uh, it's more durable than barcode, for example. Okay. Be because it it works in the dust. It works. Uh, uh, on on straight sound, all that. Yeah, stuff. it's it's, it's it, it doesn't require line of sight for something to read something. It it, it connects with it with a radio wave essentially. So, exactly. Yeah. Another 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 kind of uh, RFID is NFC. That's that works on a little bit lower frequency. Mm -hmm. And again, a thing that not many people know is that iPhone seven and later is actually natively uh, able to read NFC tags. So okay. you don't need so you don't need any additional hardware to do that. And, right. and our plugin lets you do it in FileMaker. Wonderful. The other thing is uh, uh, this company, uh, uh, Infinite Peripherals, uh, built uh, combined uh, scanners uh, called Lina Pro and Infina, which uh, look like a special case for iPhone or iPad. Right. But they had, they had barcode scanner, uh, magnetic, Stripe card reader in it, NFC reader, all that combined into a single device. And that's another thing uh, that uh, you can use with our plugin. Uh, Digital it, scales, Bluetooth, yeah. mobile receipt printers, wow. Yeah, so uh, Digital Scales is a very nice uh, story because there are still, you, you know, there are thousands of scales on the market, but mm -hmm. I wasn't, uh, when, when I was looking for a solution for the customer in Africa, I wasn't able to find a single scale that would be uh, red, equipped with Bluetooth and uh, able to connect to, uh, to iOS. iOS as well, yeah. So, so we found a way how to do it with uh, with a serial adapter. Now, uh, with the serial adapter, we are able to integrate any digital scale with a serial port to FileMaker. And because it's uh, via plugin, it doesn't interfere with the user interface. You know that um, some solutions use a keyboard simulation for bar barcode entry and uh, right. things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, and the issue with this keyboard simulation is uh, first uh, that it's uh, a little bit slower, mm -hmm. and second is uh, that it's very difficult to make it 100% reliable because just uh, tapping outside of the field can break the process oh. uh, and things like that. Yeah. So, so uh, 
uh, with our plugin, uh, we uh, was able we were able to make the solution uh, very easy to use and uh, reliable uh, without without user noticing anything. Because you, you simply press a button on the on the on the layout, and you start reading the uh, data from the scale. Okay. Wow, that's nice. Yeah, and then, uh, so we got to move on because we're running a little short of time here. Um, don't want to go sure. too long. But you have other things as well. Um, just a quick overview. What else do you have left that you guys sell? Uh, well, you, uh, or well, services you provide? Well, uh, we have a lot of uh, uh, tools and, and products. Uh, I would mention two things that that we uh, am, that we focus on, mm -hmm. which which is our uh, except uh, in in addition to integrating hardware. Right. Uh, you may know that back in two thousand eight, I believe, uh, uh, we started focusing on uh, performance optimizations as well, and for that we created our own product, which is called uh, FM Bench. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, yeah. uh, for benchmarking, yeah. Here for benchmarking, FileMaker mm -hmm. solutions. Right. Uh, but most importantly, we use it ourselves and we uh, do uh, our own optimizations. And we discovered that even though we created this tool for many uh, customers, uh, it's uh, much easier to just let us optimize their solutions for them. So we started offering that as a service. Okay. So, all right. So if you if you go to the FM Bench uh, homepage, and here uh, you can read about it, but you can simply click buy, and here we have FileMaker Solution optimization as one of the optional services. And so, what so, what do you do there? Do you actually go into the code and optimize it? And, and yes, yeah, so we, what we actually do is that in the first step we uh, implement uh, our benchmarking tool in the solution. Mm -hmm. Then we call, then we let the uh, customer use the solution for a few days or weeks uh, to collect data. Mm -hmm. Then we analyze the data, identify the bottleneck, and optimize it. Okay. And so and so we give the customer the solution back uh, significantly faster. Nice. That's very nice. So so, so, so that's all. okay. So that's one service that we offer. And another thing that uh, we ended up doing. Most of the time that uh, that we are in business mm -hmm. is taking taking uh, long term care of existing solutions, because uh, many many of customers that we currently have came to us already having some kind of filmmaker solution, mm -hmm. either, which which they either built themselves or got that, got it built by by the freelancer or or a student whatever. Mm -hmm. And at some point, that they reached a moment where uh, they were either uh, uh, not uh, having enough uh, time and energy to continue uh, development of the solution, mm -hmm. or they grew up and uh, didn't manage uh, to have the solution grow up with them. Right. So, mm -hmm. so it became uh, a little bit old for them or insufficient. Or simply, or simply, uh, they have a um, in-house developer who uh, is not able to, uh, in the limited time he has, uh, learn all the new stuff. So, so yeah. sometimes they just, sometimes they just need to uh, create a new module or mm -hmm. create a new feature that that's beyond their expertise. So, so we are taking care of such customers. We typically begin, begin with a, a solution audit, which you can find in the in the services on on our website. Uh, here, file maker solution audit, where we basically okay. uh, look at the solution, uh, have an interview with uh, the customer, find out uh, how the solution is used, how it was built, examine the code inside, uh, and okay. then. In the end, we generate a report listing uh, all known and also unknown issues that may that may be waiting for them to to kick them in the back, <laughs> and, and, and we propose a plan how to how to avoid the disasters and how to how to take care of the solution in the long term. And 
if they want us to, to, to do it, we uh, sign a service agreement and we do the care. So, so in the service, long-term service, we typically uh, maintain the server, uh, take care of uh, regular updates, uh, check, check where, where everything is going uh, as it should be, and uh, typically we have some uh, uh, capacity reserved for ongoing development. So uh, the customer typically uh, ends up uh, building a backlog of uh, changes and features they would like to uh, implement. And every month or every three months, whatever we set up in the agreement, we deliver, deliver an update. So the solution basically keeps growing uh, with them and keeps uh, okay. following their evolution. So, so these, are, these are the basic things that we do. If, if I have to sum up, uh, so it's uh, integration with hardware, uh, performance optimization, auditing existing solutions and taking long-term care of them. Okay. Well, that's great. Uh, sounds like I did not know you had all these services before today. Um, it's, it's probably hard for you to communicate that real well. I hope this will help. Um, I'm going to put this up on the web, of course, and, and uh, uh, people will be able to see it on YouTube and, and through my website and so on. I'll send a you know, link to you for you to be able to share it as well. Uh, thanks very much. Uh, I, I want to do a, one one more thing, one more quick thing. You know, wh what do you do for fun? Just just tell us a little bit about yourself. We've got a couple of minutes for that. Oh, myself. <laughs> well, it, it's it sounds strange, but one of the things that I do for fun is uh, creating apps in FileMaker. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, it, it's it's partially because uh, over the years I actually became a manager out of a developer. So at the beginning, I spent all of my time doing development. Right. Now, I, now I spend time taking care of the development team. And mm -hmm. uh, actually in the office, I have no time for development. So in some of my spare time, I uh, use FileMaker myself. And usually it's for something that helps my son because I have, I have a clever 10-year-old uh, son oh, okay. uh, who uh, currently would like to be an ast astronaut. Oh. And, uh, so the, last, the, the, the latest thing that uh, you can see here uh, that I was showing uh, the f ex goat on, mm -hmm. it's actually an app that I... Uh, uh, how uh, made for him to help him learn uh, uh, multiplication and divisions in math. <laughs> so. Okay, very good. Well, good luck to him. I mean, that's a you know, right now the the, the world of space exploration and getting stuff into space is exploding with SpaceX and and yeah. Blue Moon and and all these uh, you know, Origin I think is another one. There's and that's just a few of them, and that's just what I know of around in the United States, much less whatever's yeah. going on in other countries. And I, so, as I often uh, often find out, uh, uh, all different things are connected to each other. So as I mentioned, that startup uh, doing the planting automation, right. that, that also is a very important topic for the space exploration and for, mm -hmm. for SpaceX mission to Mars. So those things are connected as well. Yeah, so, for a SpaceX mission to Mars, they're going to have to be able to grow their own food. Yeah, like you said, yeah. grow it on Mars. You made that comment earlier. So that's okay. wonderful. Yeah, well, tell your 10-year-old son. What's his name? Uh, Stepan. Stepan. Stefan? Yeah, it's, it's a Czech version of Steven. Okay, all right. Well, that's the, tell him hi and good luck. Uh, that, I hope he does well. Thank I'd you. like to see his name in there someday. By, if I'm around long enough to see that, he's got a little ways to go to get there. But this has really been fascinating. Uh, thanks very much for sharing it with us. Again, I'm Don Clark with FileMakerProGurus.com, an FM database consultant, and this is Honza. Kodelka, and I'm probably messing that up again, but nevertheless, with two for you software, which is another thing I learned today. Thanks very much, and uh, we'll see you guys, everybody, next time around for our next interview. Thank you for the chance to talk to you, and take care. Take care.